Have you ever wondered how you can upload your music to places like Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, Tidal, etc? Well, it's super simple thanks to companies like DistroKid who will literally guide you through the simple upload process and then deal with the complicated part themselves. Now, there are a few companies out there that offer similar services, but after a quick search, you should find that DistroKid are amongst the cheapest and easiest to use. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how you would go about doing that within DistroKid. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it's done. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to know is obviously how much is this going to cost you? Now, DistroKid offer three different plans here, starting from the musician plan at $20 a year to label, which is $80 a year. But for most musicians, at least if you're starting out, the $20 plan is going to suit you fine because you can upload unlimited songs across all the platforms for just $20 a year. But I encourage that if you want to go ahead and read the different perks of each membership, then go ahead and pause the video right now and give that a read. Now, once you do have your membership, you'll have access to the menu bar at the top where we can begin to upload our first song. Now, I do have their label membership, which gives me all access to everything on the upload form with no restriction. So let's go ahead and see what is available here. So the first thing that by default is already checked is, of course, all of the music stores. There shouldn't really be any reason why you wouldn't want to be on all of them. So obviously, I'll leave them all checked. And then we've got the number of songs which you want to upload. You can upload a maximum of 35 in one go. I'm just going to go ahead and upload one single song at this time. Was the song previously released? No. It's on my YouTube channel, so... Artist, band, name, well that's my name, so... There we go. And then it tells me that I am the first artist to be named Daryl Sims in Apple Music. That's great news. And also in Spotify. So that's good news. So nobody will get confused if they ever type Daryl Sims. There's not going to be two Daryl Sims on the store. Now I can go ahead and select the release date of my song. So if I want it to release, let's say, on the 1st of January 2020. There you go. Release time. That's for Spotify only let's say 12 a.m. It does say that in other stores besides Spotify, generally it will upload about midnight-ish. Moving on from here, time synchronization. So again, this is a Spotify only thing. Do you want the song to be released at midnight in the listener's time zone or midnight in New York? And then do you want the song available for pre-order? So that's for iTunes. That's if somebody buys the song, of course, rather than streams it. So let's say yes and see what happens. We can set the particular pre-order date so let's stick it um, well let's stick it in the past obviously so it's going to be released on December the f January the 1st <laughs> let's go ahead and set pre-orders so that you can pre-order it from the 25th of December now for the record label as it suggests if you're unsigned make up a label name so I'm obviously not signed so let's go for potato records and then from here the album cover let's go ahead and choose an image let's see what we've got on the desktop what's this ah look at that i look super happy right there to upload my first song now this is obviously just for example it is important that you read through the guidelines here on uploading artwork but generally speaking you do want obviously a crystal clear piece of artwork nothing blurry or pixely because the music stores will reject your piece of music if you've done a bit of a half job so more than likely, they will probably reject this photo because you can see at the top there's, um, what is that? Yeah, that's my caged promo banner. There's a bit of text on there. It's obviously very unprofessional, but this is just me demonstrating what to expect amongst the form. From here, the language, obviously English, primary genre, rock, secondary genre, pop, I guess. And then song title. Okay, so the example that I'm going to be uploading today is Sticky Date Pudding. That is one of my fingerstyle pieces that you'll be able to listen to on my YouTube channel. I'm not actually going to upload this to Apple Music, Spotify. Again, this is just purely for example sake. I'm demonstrating how easy it might be for you to upload your music. But Sticky Date Pudding is an actual track that I've written myself. But once again, I encourage that you go ahead and read the guidelines and tips and tricks that they give you amongst the song title. 
And then you can go ahead and upload the audio file. So there we are, Sticky Date Pudding. That is an MP3 format file. And it suggests here that you can upload WAV, uh, WMA, M4A, FLAC, MP3, or CDDA. So plenty of options for you to choose from there. But generally speaking, I would encourage you to upload WAV format files since they're the highest quality of the bunch. But if for some reason you don't have access to that, it's all good. An MP3 will be absolutely fine. So for the songwriter, I wrote this song. There's no need to change that. Songwriter's real name, well, there is no lyrics, so the music was written by Daryl Sims, that's me. Explicit lyrics, no, it's not a radio edit. It is a instrumental, so it does not contain lyrics. Preview clip start time. So we can let the streaming services decide when you should preview a track at what point in the song. But I'm gonna specify specifically that my song sounds best at, let's say, one minute and 10 seconds. That's say the chorus section that I want everyone to hear because it's the most memorable section of the song. From here, the track price for iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, obviously not streaming services, but if you're gonna buy the song, let's say I want you to buy it for 69 cents. And then that is it. That's really it. Now we're gonna talk about the extras. So this is free, you might as well upload it to the Instagram and Facebook library so that people, should they want to, they can use your track in their stories and therefore it gets more exposure for you. YouTube money, this is for if anybody were to use your piece of music in their video. YouTube's content ID database would acknowledge that and pick that up and therefore the ad revenue for that video, if there are ads, will go to you. So that's cool. Next up is the store maximizer where DistroKid will automatically upload your track to new streaming services when DistroKid add them to their library. Then you've got Shazam and Siri. So this is gonna make it super simple for people who are trying to identify the song via Shazam and Siri and therefore increasing your exposure. So that's cool. At one dollar a year, why not? And then leave a legacy. This is an interesting one. So for $30, just a one-time fee, non-recurring DistroKid will not ever delete your track from streaming services due to if your membership is not renewed or an extreme case if you die you can always choose to delete it at any time you will always continue to accrue 100 percent of royalties forever and then from here you just gotta tick all the terms and conditions just to basically confirm that 100% of this work is yours. I strongly recommend that you read this stuff because obviously if you go against any terms or regulations, then your account will be suspended and you won't be able to upload your music. So obviously based on the plan that I've chosen, the upload process is completely free, but I am being billed an additional $30 because I've chosen some of these optional extras. But if I were to uncheck these, I would therefore with my plan be billed zero and I can go ahead and click done and once I've done that DistroKid will handle the complicated part and your music will be up on the music stores within just a few days. Now once your song is up on the music libraries you can go up and check the stats see how your music is doing since I've obviously not released anything yet I have no stats but you can also go over to bank and see how your tracks are performing you can even see a full breakdown to which is the most profitable store for your music. So that's really cool. And then of course, once you have the money in your DistroKid account, you can go ahead and withdraw that into your own wallet. So that's pretty much it. As you can see, it's super simple and DistroKid allows for a lot of freedom in the initial upload process. And then once you've got all that information penciled in, you just gotta sit tight for a couple days and keep checking the music libraries and your song will be up to share in no time at all. Now, if you are interested in signing up for a DistroKid membership yourself, you will find in the description below a discount link where you can get 7% off of your membership price. And besides that, I think that's everything that I want to share in this video. If you have any comments or questions, then please go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. And I will see you in the next video.